Treasure Island, published in 1883 by Robert Louis Stevenson, popularized the now familiar characters of pirates and brought them to Rome's swilling life. When an old sailor named Billy Bones dies in the inn belonging to young Jim Hawkins' parents, he leaves a greasy old map on which an X marks the spot where treasure is buried. Jim joins the crew of a ship in pursuit of Bones' treasure, and on the sea meets up with Long John Silver, a peck-legged pirate who has infiltrated their ranks. Jean must survive mutinities and counter mutinities, face hand to hand combat with drunken sailors, and outweep double crossing tears before the treasure can be his. At the start of Treasure Island, the young Jean Hawkins is living a monotonous warring life with his mother and father at the Admiral Ben Bao Inn. Life is pretty ordinary for the poor young boy, although one day an appealing sunburned sailor comes through the front door of the family establishment. A sailor calls himself a captain and demands a room. He proceeds then to settle down at the Admiral Ben Bao Inn drinking a ton of whiskey and telling terrifying stories about his life on the high seas. Nonetheless, one day, while they are at Jean's father's funeral, a blind man appears at the inn looking for the captain. This man is pure, and he orders that the captain meet his old shipmate at 10 o'clock at night. The blind man leaves, the captain jumps up, and there he falls over death from a heart attack. After some shenanigans with Pew and a bunch of pirates who try to steal Billy Bones' sea chest, Jim comes away with a packet of papers from Billy Bones. He decides to bring the papers to Dr. Lipsy, the local judge. Jean finds Dr. Lipsy at the squire's house. The squire is Mr. Trelawney. Dr. Lipsy and Squire Trelawney both agree that Captain Flint is a famous pirate and that Jean's packet of papers must contain a treasure map to Flint's fortune. Squire Trelawney offers to put up the money for a sailing voyage to the island shown on the map. Since who doesn't want to go hunting for treasure? So it's decided. Squire Trelawney is going to go to a coastal town in England right away to hire a ship and a crew, and then Dr. Lipsy will come down to accompany him on request. Jim gets to go, too. Escaping boy. Several weeks later, Trelawney sends for Jean and Lipsy and introduces them to Long John Silver, a Bristol tavern keeper whom he has hired as the ship's cook. They also meet Captain Smollett, who tells them that he does not like the crew or the voyage, which it seems everyone in Bristol knows is a search for treasure. After taking a few precautions, however, they set sail for the distant island. Just before the island is sighted, Jean overhears Silver talking with two other crewmen and realizes that he and most of the others are pirates and have planned a mutiny. Jean tells the captain, Trelawney, and Lipsy, and they calculate that they will be 7 to 19 against the mutineers and must pretend not to suspect anything until the treasure is found, when they can surprise their adversaries. But after the ship is anchored, Silver and some of the others go ashore, and two men who refuse to join the mutiny are killed. From then on, Jimmy must face different adventures, in which his character must change, and he must grow up as a man. 
they go through different scenarios where Trick and Thief are the main characters. Finally, they're able to arrive to the location where the X is initially marked on the map. Just to find out that the treasure has already been taken. Then, Mr. Lipsy arrives to rescue Jim Hawkins. They save the money and start a good life. Everyone else gets plenty of treasure and they continue with their life. Gene Hawkins appears as the main narrator of Treasure Island and the instigator of its most important plot. Gene is clearly the central character in the novel and is probably around 12 or 13 years old. He is initially a quiet and obedient son of the owner of an inn near Bristol, England. However, throughout the story he must change his personality and grow as a man. It is also evident that throughout the whole narration, he displays incredible acts of courage, although he doesn't seem too vain to show off on his courage. Long John Silver is a very complex and self-contradictory character. He appears as a very noble man, although his true intentions are rather mendacious. He appears as a dichotomy between loyalty and disloyalty shifting sides so frequently that it's very difficult to know his true affiliations. Dr. Lipsy appears as the rational, down-to-earth authority and figure for young ill. He's a respected person and knowledgeable man, although Jim Hawkins sees him as a respectful man, he never considers to be a source of inspiration. The relation with real life and present life can be explained in terms of the duality of evil against good, that is to say, the contemporary dichotomy of greed and wealth. In other words, this can be illustrated by a famous quote of John Jacques Rousseau, man is naturally good but corrupted by society. In this order of ideas, the literacy motive depicted in Treasure Island deals with different challenging social and ecological scenarios in which Jim Hawkins ought to make his mind between taking a whole corrupted pilot life or a more benevolent attitude as a respectful sailor. Rock reappears throughout the novel as a powerful symbol of the pilot records, violent and uncontrolled behavior. In Stevenson's time, people consider Ron as a crude form of the alcohol, the opposite of the refined and elegant wine that the Captain may occasionally drink. The pirates do not engage in light social drinking. When they indulge in drunk, their drunkenness is destructive. As I reflect in the pirate song lyric about the dead man's chest, therefore, Jin is able to defeat his hollow attacker largely because Jimmy's shoulder and Israel hands is drunk. Ron symbolizes an inability to control or manage what is one own, one properly, one mission, and one very self. One of the more relevant motives in our civilization is the political situation. Indeed, the fact that the politicians have to think if they only want to help the people or if they only pretend to give their money for their own necessities. 